hello you guys and welcome to today's video as you can already tell by the title today i'm giving you a breast augmentation update slash explant update or explant experience because i ended up getting a full-on explant aka removing my implants i know those of you who have been following along with my little like breast augmentation journey you guys are probably like what you took them out but yes i put a post on my instagram that i ended up getting a breast explant just this past week actually so it's only been about a week that i've gone through with the procedure and so in today's video i want to give you guys an update also give you like a brief timeline in case you're just stumbling across this video and you have no idea what my experience has been like and why i decided to end up getting an explant and i also have a few quite a few questions on my instagram story because that's where i posted my update that i ended up getting an explant so i put a question box on my story so you guys can ask me uh, questions on there and there are quite a few editing me here i completely forgot to tell you guys that i will also be including a vlog at the end of this video of my surgery day for getting my explant as well as the following days i think the day before i vlogged as well just basically a vlog of like what my experience was while i was going through it so stay tuned for that at the end it's gonna be a pretty uh informative video i do have a few like disclaimers slash house rules that i want to get to before i even get started these videos are more so me sharing my experience they're not to try to convince anybody to get a breast augmentation or to not get a breast augmentation or plastic surgery in general so i just want to put that out there because i don't want anybody to think that i'm sitting here like you shouldn't do it or you should do it or whatever decisions need to be made by you when it comes to something this big like cosmetic surgery this is literally just me sitting here sharing my experience hoping that it'll help somebody out there whether or not they're deciding to get any type of procedure done if you are somebody who is like anti-plastic surgery it's not for you you don't like it the topic makes you cringe or whatever the case may be I'm telling you right now this is not going to be the video for you you do not need to leave comments down below that are like see this is why i would never or blah, blah, blah. just save it because you're gonna end up wasting your time and i'm gonna end up deleting them and blocking so just i i hate that i have to say that but i already know that these type of topics get people like going so there's that but now that i've gotten that out of the way we can go ahead and jump right in so i'm first going to give you guys um, I have little notes here on my phone because I don't want to forget anything. I'll first give you guys a quick rundown of the timeline of when everything went down. And again, I have videos on my channel where I already talk about why I got a breast augmentation, when, what CCs I had, and then I also share... Uh, my revision and when I ended up doing there so you can always go on my channel and in the little search bar that's on my channel you can search like breast and I'm pretty sure they'll pop up there um, but aside from that so first and foremost I decided to get a breast augmentation in well not decided because I've known for a very 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 long time for years that I wanted to get a breast augmentation but I ended up actually following through with it in august of 2020 so i got a breast augmentation i was super excited in my video i give you guys like details and what i'm gonna get and my before and you know i was so excited i had photos and i had like i'm a very planned out strategic person especially when it comes to stuff like that so and it was my first time doing it so i felt like you know i had a grip on it i was ready prepared did my research and everything came out of my breast augmentation surgery felt really good um physically like i felt i didn't feel super bad after the anesthesia or anything like that i actually felt pretty good and i thought the process was a lot easier than i expected however immediately after my first breast augmentation 
I noticed that, and this was literally, if you watch my, I don't even know how many videos I have, but I had a video where I did the vlog of my breast augmentation. Towards the end, I'm wearing a recovery bra, and you can see there that one of my breasts looked a lot more defined and perky than the other one. And for me, my left one, which is this one, was the one that was perky, defined, upright, and like perfect. And then this one over here was a little bit flatter. It looked a little bit different, especially when I did not have a bra on. When I would look at myself in the mirror, this one was noticeably lower than this one. I was like, maybe I just need, you know, a few weeks and it'll kind of, this one will drop and it'll make a little bit more sense. So I let it rock for a little bit. I was like, I'm going to give it some time, let the swelling go down, blah, blah, blah. So I noticed that after a few weeks, it still hadn't gone down. So I expressed to my surgeon like, hey, I noticed that this one looks a little bit different. He was like, just let it, you know, sit for a little bit and let the swelling go down and it should kind of even out at the end. And I was like, cool, okay. So I gave it some time, gave it some time, gave it some time and it never got even so after about month five ish it was like a little bit closer to like the six month mark i expressed to my surgeon again i was like hey i'm noticing that it still hasn't really evened out and it still looks very very different and i'm a little bit concerned what can we do there and he was like yes he acknowledged that he did see that there was a difference there and he was like what we can do is go in and do a revision and fix it so with this um surgeon i had i don't want to call it a warranty but basically like a little warranty where if anything goes wrong within the first six months um you can go in and get it fixed at no additional charge except for the anesthesia and the room you did have to pay or i did have to pay for that part um, and I'm going to get into how much I ended up paying overall. That was one of the questions that I got. But yeah, the second time around for the revision, I didn't have to pay for the surgeon fee or like the implant or anything like that. But I did have to pay for the anesthesia and the room, which wasn't that much. I was like, okay, let's do it. We'll do a revision, try to fix it and see what's going on in there. So this was, sorry, sorry, sorry. Timeline is totally wrong. I got my breast augmentation March of 2020 and then time went on five six months and then august 2020 came and that's when i got my revision so and i got my revision with the same surgeon because i had that six months to kind of work with got my revision and i was super excited because at first i i was obviously discouraged because i didn't expect to not have good results straight off the bat and and it's also recommended to wait about five to six months to see the results and to go in and do a revision just because you want to give your time your body time to heal did the revision with the same surgeon came out and it looked pretty much the same it looked a little bit higher but it was still bottoming out that is what it's called what i experienced is called bottoming out and that's when the implant lowers and comes out slips out of the breast socket I, I really don't know like the technical terms i'm just kind of explaining it how i know it but the thing is the bottoming out didn't occur like you know after a few months or after a few years it was immediately after my first surgery i noticed that it had it was lower so i don't even know if it's technically considered bottoming out or if it was just not placed you know where it needed to be but that is what i experienced so revision didn't help don't know what to do at this point i don't know if maybe i should just wait it out and see if it gets better or what have you now keep in mind when this bottoming out started i was experiencing some pain and at first it was like discomfort i thought it was just from the surgery and whatnot but it kind of turned into this tingling it's so hard to explain like explain it's like a tingling numbing pinching sensation and it's like a radiating pain it, it just kind of felt like a heartbeat i don't it's so weird to explain but it just felt like it was the best way i can describe it is like this like a numbing just annoying 
radiating pain that I was feeling underneath this breast right here, right around my like upper rib cage area, right underneath the breast. And again, I was like, because me, I've never done any cosmetic procedure, any surgery, nothing. I had nothing under my belt, so I had no idea what to expect. So I was like, maybe this will go away after a few months or, you know, after we get this revision. So after I got the revision, it didn't go away and the bottoming out wasn't fixed. So I was just like, okay, what is going on? So by that time, I was a little bit frustrated. I was a little bit overwhelmed and I didn't really know what to do. So I ended up just waiting it out for about a year because I was like, I was already feeling like I had done too much to my body to begin with. So from August 2020 to August 2021, I just kind of dealt with the discomfort. What I noticed that would kind of help was wearing very specific bras. I could wear a sports bra, but it would be very uncomfortable. I would have to only wear it for a short amount of time and then change into my more comfortable bra i couldn't wear like underwire bras or anything that was too too tight because it would automatically start to hurt i couldn't go braless if i had a bra that i mean if i had a top that required like no bra or like a low cut bra or strapless bra i couldn't do it because it would start to hurt so that alone kind of discouraged me from wanting to wear certain clothes, certain tops, because I was like, I'm not gonna be comfortable. I'm not gonna be able to wear this how I wanna wear it because it is going to hurt. From there, let it sink in, figure, try to figure out what to do. I did a, a lot of research, a lot more research than I did the first time around, which even, I think this is the most frustrating part is, if you watch my first, first and I think second video about my experience, I, especially in my first one, I talked about how I really did my research, I saved my money, I knew years in advance that this was something that I wanted to do, I was super prepared, this was not like a one-off, I just want to go, like, be spontaneous and get my breasts done. This is something that I had prepared for and I just felt like crap because I was like, I, I thought I had gone the correct route for myself when it came to doing something like this because i was like okay cool i'm gonna prepare i'm gonna save my money i'm gonna save extra money just in case of anything i am gonna go and pick the right surgeon or at least try to and just all those different things and so i was kind of throughout that year that i waited and did my research i was kind of a little down on myself because i was just like dang did i not do enough research did i not pick the right person i gave myself some time to go ahead and look for a new surgeon and i did and i ended up finding somebody in beverly hills his name is dr eugene kim and i ended up going to him to finally fix the bottoming out issue that i was having and he did fix it and i was so 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 happy with the results so this was august 2021 just a few months ago got my revision everything looked super good and i was super excited however about a month after i was like healed and everything that annoying pain was still there and we thought okay maybe fixing the bottoming out would help However, we obviously after fixing it, it didn't. So this is after breast augmentation, revision, and then I had a revision again. So they looked super good. From my first revision to my second revision, I ended up going a little bit bigger um, and I went with a different implant. He went ahead and did a round implant to see if that would kind of help with the bottoming out and um, with more cleavage and just things like that and i loved how they looked like i really <laughs> loved how they looked however that pain was still there and we were just like what the heck is it like what could it be why are you uncomfortable why does it hurt you if we went in and fixed the bottoming out so then from there up until like late january i've kind of been going back and forth with dr kim and just kind of being like hey this is kind of what i'm feeling what can i do questions like anything that i was feeling or any questions that i had i would go back and forth with him i had tried acupuncture i tried massage therapy 
I tried medication. I actually ended up going to my primary care. I had gone to urgent care um, because I had like a stomach bug. And while I was there, I was just like, okay, since we're here, let me tell you what I've been experiencing on this boob. Can we try to figure this out? So they ran tests on me, CT scans, x-rays, the whole nine. Everything came out looking like normal. So I was just like, okay this is very frustrating so i had done the acupuncture massage therapy after doing the ct scans and all that going back and forth with my primary care doctor they gave me medications i had tried one of those my body reacted so strangely to it and i was like absolutely not i'm not doing this because it was like a nerve the the main thing that kind of seemed to be what it could have been was nerve pain or a trapped nerve which is basically like tissue can build up around a nerve and cause it to just cause constant pain and so we all thought like that's probably what it is let's try to figure out ways to make you feel a lot more comfortable because with nerve pain you, it's kind of hard to figure out how to make it go away it's more so about managing the pain so did the massage therapy acupuncture medication i did heating icing resting and i had no luck with any of them acupuncture helped me really really like one time i did about seven sessions uh, no it helped me twice i had gone to somebody the first six sessions and one of those sessions i kind of felt like oh, okay this kind of feels a little bit better but then after that the next two three sessions it went back to feeling the same and then i had gone right before the week before my explant surgery i had tried it one more time with somebody else and i was like let me just try it again see if this like will miraculously <laughs> go away and she even did a massage therapy and tried to like see if there's any breast tissue built up in that area and no like when she would feel there she was just like i feel like there's something there but it doesn't feel like breast tissue doesn't feel like i mean obviously it wasn't like a tumor or anything like that because i had gone ct scans and all of that stuff and it was just like she's like i feel kind of like something but it just i don't it doesn't feel like you know breast tissue or like what i was expecting to feel and i was just like great so for me what i would feel when i would touch it because i i already told you guys what it felt like just like pain wise but when i would touch the area it would feel like there was something there i would feel like a thin something and it when they told me it was nerve pain i was like is it maybe like a nerve or a vein that is trapped and it's just like inflamed and that's what i'm feeling because it would feel like like a line and it would just feel thick and it would feel like uh just thinking about it makes me want to scream because <laughs> it was so annoying it was so annoying and frustrating and i felt it and i was just like there's something there there's something there there's something there I don't know if it's a vein or if it's a nerve but whatever it is it's hurting me and there's something there that does not feel the same that this one does i would touch this one under and it would feel like normal something's going on so um after doing all those different things and realizing okay this none of this is working and i'm not about to take this medication that made me feel super super bad i i'm gonna take them out I don't know what else to do the only other options that i had aside from that was going to a, sp a pain specialist and seeing if they can do like injections to the area to help with the pain and at that point it was starting to get a little bit too much i was like if i have to do all of that i'm just gonna take them out so something was telling me like okay maybe the best option is going to be just to take these out and see if that helps because what i was noticing was that when i was feeling the most comfortable was when i would lay down so if i would obviously sleep at night and i would wake up in the morning i felt fine up until you know one or two hours after being up and about it would start to hurt again or if i jump in the shower and i'm braless it would start to hurt so basically the weight of the implant was sitting on wherever it was hurting and it would cause pain every single day when i reached out to dr kim and told him 
that I wanted to do my explant with him because I loved the results that he had given me and just his his just the way that he is he's very straightforward he's very honest he's very like the bedside manner everything is just like I was like I just want to do it with you and he was like come on in we'll do your appointment we'll do your pre-op all of that stuff I had called in very desperately and like literally almost in tears um end of January and I was just like hey I d you know decided I want to go ahead and do the explant with Dr. Kim and they were like okay we he has availability next week and I was like okay sign me up <laughs> sign me up and I went ahead booked my appointment then and there and I just knew like I'm just gonna this is what I'm gonna do so I went in within I think I went in the next day to do my pre-op he gave me the rundown he was like you know this should be a pretty smooth easy recovery for you we just went ahead and went in a few months ago and did your revision and why I know what's going on in there so it should be pretty smooth I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna try my best to see what is going on that I didn't see the first time around and see what we can do to make you feel better after removing the implants and so you know took the shirt off we went in again and he felt he was like where is it hurting he was feeling around he was like obviously looking to see if there was any infection or like trying to narrow it down and trying to see what is going on that is causing her this pain so i was very specific i was like it's up here he felt and everything like that so then went in this past week which was 2 to 22 that was the day of my appointment february 2nd 2022 he gave me the final rundown you know this is how it's gonna go and you should be okay after this like i'm gonna go in there see what i can do see what i can see and you know you should your healing should be pretty good so i was nervous he came in and he you know told me like i said told me everything you're gonna be okay we're gonna figure this out the nurse was there she was just like super kind just like she was when i had gone the previous time and she's like you know you're gonna be fine we're gonna take these out and then the anesthesiologist came in and he made me feel a lot better too because i was obviously nervous about the anesthesia part i was like is it bad to be going under anesthesia again and i was just scared like scared my, like when you have never done anything like this and you're going in for the first time you're obviously scared because you're like what is this going to be like how's my body going to react and then going through it again and again and again it's just a lot so he was like no he was very reassuring he's like you're going to be okay it's not you know bad you're you're going to heal and you're going to be you're going to be okay so i was like okay hook me up <laughs> so they went ahead and put the iv in i started to feel like a little bit cold and then i just like dozed off and that was it woke up no boobs <laughs> and i felt so light and happy um i'm gonna go in in depth right now with how i felt afterwards and stuff but i was just really more so happy because i felt like okay this is the light at the end of the tunnel i'm gonna feel good after this and it just felt nice to be like light you know so got out the nurse was super sweet and she was just like oh you're out she didn't make me feel like oh my gosh you look so different or like nothing she just was like okay you know here are some crackers you want some water some juice or like you know just making me feel super normal and comfortable sat there for a while and waited for them to call my dad to come on down and for the anesthesia to kind of wear off jumping in one more time because i completely forgot to mention what dr kim ended up finding when he went in there um what was causing the pain pretty much so he went in to remove my implants and since i had gone in uh the week before and like specifically showed him exactly where i was feeling the pain he was able to see and he kept note of that and everything he went in the day of my explant right where i was describing where the pain was he removed some of the like scar tissue that had built up there whatever the case may be and underneath the scar tissue he was able to see that there were stitches near down like near my rib cage area which those were not supposed to be there 
and so he went in and removed them and you know once he saw that he was like i was so tempted to put your um implants back in because i knew that what was causing the pain was probably those stitches that were there because they were not supposed to be there they were very very deep in scar tissue which is why he couldn't even see them when he went in to do my revision uh because they were so down deep in scar tissue and so low in kind of like the near the rib cage area that they weren't visible where he went in because that's not where they were supposed to be if that makes sense i don't know what happened how they got down there look all i know is i am so thankful that i listened to my gut and that i was like there's something there that's bothering me and it doesn't feel normal it feels like there's something there i can't pinpoint it because i don't know what's going on under there but i i don't think they would have been able to anybody would have been able to really know unless they went in there because um even when i went in to do my ct scans and my x-rays and things like that they you know they were like it looks like normal like you we can see that you have breast implants and everything like that but i think because you know i have a breast augmentation and there are stitches kind of remotely close to the breast area it probably on scans and x-rays looks like it would be normal but unless you go in there surgically to see what's going on then you would really know okay yeah these are not supposed to be there and that just confirmed to me like okay yes sabrina you were right there was something there that was not right and there was something going on you felt what you felt and you were right like it because when you're going through something like this it kind of feels like am i going crazy am i tripping like i know i feel different i know i feel something there i know i feel this pain but you know going here going there trying different things and all of that it just is not going away so the fact that he was able to pinpoint it and that he took the time to actually look to see where i was describing the pain and to take a look with whatever technique that he does removing scar tissue and whatnot it's just like such a relief knowing that that is not there anymore so that is the timeline and that is kind of when everything went down what i was feeling and why i decided to end up going with an explant and now here i am one week post-op filming this video for you guys and i'm gonna um, go through and tell you guys how i'm feeling and whatnot so for me this was not something where i was experiencing symptoms of breast implant illness i know that's one of the top questions that i got as well is if i experienced any bii symptoms and i did not some of the common symptoms are like chronic fatigue hair loss joint pains and a lot of different things like that i did not feel any anything of that sort the only pain that i felt was the pain that i was feeling right here and then a few other things too which um i have written down here so the only other things that i felt aside from the pain right here were uh a little bit of tingling and numbness and coldness in this arm and i'm like trying to think to myself is that associated with the pain that i was feeling but i didn't start to feel this until maybe about a few weeks before i actually went in to get the explant uh, i had never felt that like tingling feeling in my arm until then which i thought was really really strange but i did feel that and then of course back soreness because when you have breast implants you probably don't even or at least i didn't even really notice but i was slouching a lot more because i had more weight in the front and because i was in pain so i would constantly put myself in a position where i would feel most comfortable and oftentimes that would mean slouching over and just like trying to be like this so i would be more comfortable so now i kind of feel like i can be upright and i can have my chest up and not feel like i have pain and big old jugs <laughs> sitting right here anymore and then um i don't know if this is like really really a symptom that i experienced or if it was just from the fact that i was super stressed but i feel like just like my face like i had lost color or like i was a little bit more pale and i think it was from just the daily stress that i was feeling because the 
day after or a few days after I got my explant, my mom was like, you look like a little bit more flushed and like you have a little bit more color to your skin. And that, like that same day or the day after I had put out, put out a little bit of makeup and the, the product that I normally would use on my face was actually a little bit too light for me and I really hadn't done much. I was sitting outside for a little bit but not enough to where I would get like a tan or like a anything like that and so when I had put the concealer and it was too light for me I was just like oh shoot was was I like really pale before and I didn't even realize it I don't know but um that's just a little I I'm assuming is from the stress that I was experiencing mentally from being in pain every single day every single day those are the only symptoms that I really experienced now as far as things that I couldn't do because of what I was experiencing so it's small little things that you do on the daily that you wouldn't even think would be kind of more so taken from you with something like this wrapping a towel around myself after the shower I couldn't do that because the towel obviously you have to wrap it right around here and then like put it in so that it can sit on your breast and it can hold and I couldn't do that because the towel one would be too tight around my chest in order for it to stay upright and it was adding additional weight to this breast which would then cause it to hurt so after I would get out of the shower every single day I would have to put my bra on immediately or else it would start to hurt so when you guys would see me or a robe even so when you guys would see me on my instagram stories and i was in my robe uh 10 times out of 10 i was wearing a bra underneath my robe because it was super uncomfortable going braless was not an option i couldn't really wear many many um what do you call it? like spaghetti straps or strapless shirts or anything like that if I did, it was one of those things where I gave myself a pep talk ahead of time and I told myself, you're about to be in a lot of pain, you're going to suck it up because you're trying to be cute, let's do it. So most of the time though, you guys would see me in t-shirts or baggy tees or sweatshirts or whatever because it would hurt. Or if I was wearing a v-neck shirt or something, I was wearing a bra underneath. And so... Wearing a bralette, I couldn't wear a bralette because bralettes do not have any support at the bottom, so that was not an option either. Again, if I wore a bralette, it was for a quick picture for the gram and or to be on Instagram stories, and then I would have to immediately change as soon as it would start to hurt. Wearing a sports bra when I would go to the gym, I would wear it, come back home, have to change because it would be too compressed and it would hurt too much. I couldn't sleep on my right side because this was the side where it was hurting. I'm a side sleeper so I would have to sleep on this side just about every day if I would turn over on this side again it was one of those things where I'd be like you're about to be in pain but you're gonna suck it up because you're trying to sleep on this side hugging people which is like nobody probably even noticed this but when I would hug people I wouldn't squeeze too tight or I would have to almost like hold back hopefully nobody ever thought I was being like rude or didn't want to hug them but I would have to hug and just kind of hold back a little bit because if there was somebody I had seen that I hadn't seen in a while and they would come in to hug me and squeeze it would hurt side hugging would hurt because it would press against the implant and it would hurt so it was just one of those things where I would just be like "Ooh," and I just wouldn't say anything but I just I was in pain so and the last thing that I couldn't do were no spa massages. I couldn't go to the spa to get a full body massage or anything like that because that would require me to lay on my stomach which would cause pressure which would cause pain. So, I mean in general, when you get breast augmentations they say you shouldn't be laying on your stomach but I think most people would probably try to figure out a way to be able to do so whereas for me I couldn't because either way it was going to hurt so I haven't gotten a full body massage or a massage in general in about two years and that's where I'm going for my birthday <laughs> that's coming up is to get a full body massage because I have not had a chance to have that in a while just like there's small little things that you know to the average person like okay it's not a big deal but they they make a big difference so aside from that last thing before i get into the q a portion of this um what i experienced post-op um after my explant so 
normal things uh constipation which is again normal after getting anesthesia and especially after getting anesthesia four times um i've just had a little bit of trouble getting like my bowel movements back to normal that's mainly the only thing i had body and jaw soreness for the first like two three days after my explant and basically i felt from here down i felt like i had just done the craziest heavy lifting workout of my life i just felt super sore kind of like i got hit by a bus it just felt like my body was wrecked and then my jaw was sore as well um, and it was all because of the anesthesia you can look it up it says body soreness is completely common after anesthesia and then after the like second or third day of feeling that soreness it subsided and now i feel completely normal um so right now i'm sleeping on my back i can sleep completely flat which before well comparing an explant to getting a breast augmentation when you get a breast augmentation, you cannot lay flat. You're supposed to sleep upright for the first few weeks. Whereas with the X plan, I can sleep upright if I want to, or I can sleep completely flat on my back. However, for both or for either one, you cannot lay on your sides for the first few weeks. So he said after Dr. Dr. Eugene Kim told me that um, I'm going back in two weeks. And after those two weeks, if everything's looking good, then I can start to sleep on my sides and stuff, which makes me so happy because I think my sides and on my stomach too since I don't have any more implants in, so that that's exciting. Uh, diet, my diet is the same. The first few days, you know, or the first day or so, just light food, soups, crackers, breads, um, lots of water to kind of detox a little bit. Um, just avoiding herbal teas and herbal things like that or any herbal medications if you take any. Um, I did have to avoid that and then vitamins to herbal stuff and vitamins you have to avoid two weeks before and two weeks after and that's for both an explant and a breast augmentation no alcohol of course two weeks before no alcohol or smoking but I don't smoke so just no alcohol two weeks before and two weeks after but if you're not taking pain meds then you're fine which i haven't taken any pain medications throughout all of this i've only taken pretty much tylenol on the first day and then after that i haven't taken anything aside from my antibiotic and then which i need to take mine right now actually and then i haven't had any pain in either breast just some soreness and occasional pinching which is normal as well uh, the first few days i couldn't shower post-op there's my alarm for my antibiotic <laughs> um the first few days i couldn't really shower i had to just kind of do like little bird baths or just kind of like clean up and change things like that and then yesterday i was about a week post-op and he told me you can take a shower and you can do all that stuff so i had the best shower of my life shaved from head to toe did the exfoliation and like the whole nine washed my hair blow dried it because i was like feeling gross after not being able to take a full full shower for a few days um and then just wearing a tight sports bra 24 7 except for in the shower for the first few weeks he said for the first month i'll have to wear my sports bra 24 7 and then after that i'll be able to change into a regular bra and just wear i think my sports bra at night so that's everything i wrote in my notes and um you know just kind of how i'm feeling what my post-op instructions have been and everything like that so now i'm going to give you guys a look at how i look with the sports bra on because you're not gonna be able to see my boobs obviously but um i'll just kind of show you guys really quick it's not you're not gonna see a whole lot but i just look a lot more petite i look like my old normal self <laughs> pre um breast augmentation if you watch my first video you see in that video that i give you guys a before and it looks literally the same that's how it looks i just look tiny and petite and like my literally like how i looked before i just i have some like bruising and stuff from when i had the tight compression that's one thing i forgot to mention is that when 
you are recovering from an explant it is a little bit different because i had to wear a really really tight bandage around to really press down and compress my boob so that excess liquid doesn't build sometimes people have drains sometimes people don't i did not have drains with any of my procedures um he just put that really tight bandage to kind of keep things in place and um so it was super super tight and you cannot loosen it you have to keep it like that because if not it can definitely affect your results so kept it on there but because it's super tight like i have a little bit of like bruising underneath here because of like you know move trying to move around with it and stuff but um that i would say that was the most uncomfortable part of it all was the bandage part aside from that i was not in like a lot of pain after anything like that it was a pretty easy process it's just the the bandage tightness and the um anesthesia soreness um so yeah that's how i look now just pretty much back to back to how i looked before petite and tiny i'm back to pretty much being an a cup before getting my breast augmentation i was a 34a and then with my first breast augmentation i was a 34c and then at the end i ended up being a 34 like full d a low double d and then now i'm back to <laughs> being a 34a i'm pretty sure but that's how i look so i'm back to you know being petite <laughs> being part of the itty bitty titty committee um now i'm gonna go on to my instagram and read off some of your guys is questions on here have you experienced loose skin slash permanent scarring so scarring no matter what you get is going to be there um some people scar a lot less and it's a lot less visible than others but for me because i have like a medium i think it's because i have like more of a medium complexion the scarring um throughout this whole time has never completely gone away it's always been like there i don't want to show you guys right now because it's still scabby and stuff it's not completely like healed or anything i don't however have uh like stretch marks or anything like that which i guess is good loose skin it's not necessarily loose but it is more jiggly if that makes sense like the things are thangin now <laughs> more than before because obviously they were stretched out to be like a d and then they were put back however they did say my my surgeon said and as well as when i was watching videos and doing research that after about a month or so they should pretty much perk back up to how they were pre-breast augmentation it might be a little bit more looser but it's going to take your body a little bit of time to adjust but they should pretty much go back to looking normal aside from that my boobs look pretty much how they looked before i think it's just more of a shock because you haven't or i haven't seen my breasts like this in so long that i'm just like oh shoot like i went from looking like this to looking like this but then I looked, I have my before and after photos and I look at how my boobs were before and I'm like, oh, they, this is how they looked before. Except now I feel like I have a little bit more fullness. It, I'm not sitting here and saying your girl's about to be have all kinds of cleavage and be like busty. But compared to my before, I do feel like I have a little tiny bit more breast tissue than before i got a breast augmentation which i'm not mad at because i feel like now i'll be able to fill my little a cup a little bit more than before so and it's nothing that a little um push-up bra can't fix i feel like now with the push-up push-up bra i'll have a little bit more to work with too did you have to pay every time you went in for correction so i guess i will get into the price part of this so i did have to pay for kind of like every step of the way however the most expensive were my first breast augmentation and then when i got my revision by dr eugene kim um and that is for obvious reasons you're going to different doctors it's the first time you're doing a whole situation right now for the revision with the my first surgeon that one like i expressed to you guys was i did have to pay for the anesthesia things like that but everything else was covered the price of that was like not much at all and then when i got 
with um dr eugene kim and he did my explant for me same thing the cost was like nothing compared to having to pay for an actual like full-blown uh augmentation or revision or anything like that so all in all from beginning to end i paid about 17 to 18 thousand dollars which that's a lot of money okay at the end of the day that is money that could have sorry it's gonna keep going off until i take this um until i take my and i bought it because i don't want to forget but at the end of the day i could have used that money for something else however like i said to me it's at this point not even about that it's about me finally feeling semi like back to normal and feeling good and feeling okay and looking at that i'm like i feel like it could have been a lot more expensive than that so it's kind of like if i paid for two breast augmentations um minus the revision and explant part so when i look at it that way it's like i guess it's not that bad but at the end of the day it's a lot of money and it's money that could have gone towards something else however i'm trying not to think about it in that way because i'm just grateful that first of all i was able to pay for the different steps that i had to go through and that it wasn't something to where i felt stuck because i was like i shoot i'm in so much pain and i can't do anything about it type of thing which is why even in my very first video i think or the second video i expressed to you guys that if for whatever reason you're thinking about doing anything at all save a little bit of extra money because you just never know if i wouldn't have had extra money to spend on this process i would have felt like crap and i would have had to deal with the pain a lot longer than i wanted to and who knows like what could have happened long term with that did i get a lift or consider one i did not get a breast lift i literally just got a plain old explant and he also did not remove the breast tissue that was in there because i was not experiencing any bii symptoms if i was however then of course it is recommended to remove everything um but aside from that i i didn't get a lift i didn't really consider one because of the scarring that it leaves it does leave a bigger scar because they have to cut from your nipple down and then do the anchor all the way around and for me i was just like i i don't even care how my boobs look after this just get them out <laughs> just get them out and i will work with them after i'll with a cute little bra or something but i didn't want to go through with the process of doing another type of surgery i just wanted to kind of get them out another common question i'm getting is what i'm gonna do about um the first surgery and like everything that happened there and i don't know yet what route i'm gonna go with that however that's not something that i would really discuss or talk about on the internet what advice would you give to someone that wants to get a breast augmentation um this one's tricky because before i would have said you know do your research and save extra money and all that stuff and all of that still applies however this was a situation where it wasn't necessarily something that was in my control or something that i did i feel like i did all the necessary prepping to have like a good outcome i did my research i went to a board certified surgeon the whole whole thing and i still had this experience but if you are wanting to get a breast augmentation that's the most i can say is to really 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 do your research try to go somebody try to go with somebody who's recommended by someone that you know dr eugene kim was a re recommendation to me from somebody that i know so that made me feel a lot more comfortable whereas the first time around it was just somebody that i was going to based on like reviews and photos and all that stuff but um just doing as much research as you can when it comes to finding your surgeon and when it comes to possible outcomes afterwards and saving extra money if you can am i gonna get implants in the future or am i gonna try again in the future and honestly right now um i i don't know i don't know how i feel about it i want to get my body rest and i don't even really want to think about it to be honest if i were to do anything it wouldn't be for a few years and it would probably be after i have kids just because i want to see obviously you have to after you have kids your breasts stretch out more and they do more things and they change so if anything until 
I wouldn't do anything until then but honestly that's not really something that I even really want to think about right now I just want to embrace my little boobies and just heal and take it one day at a time do you miss the girls I do I do and I don't I don't for obvious reasons the pain and whatnot and because of what I experienced I feel like they never really truly felt like my breasts it just kind of felt like I had something there and a lot of women that get breast augmentations you know they're like oh after a while they just feel like they're yours and I feel like I never got that experience um, but at the same time I do miss them because I finally had the results that I always wanted for years and years and years ever since I was younger and it looked how I wanted it to look at the end of the day it just didn't feel comfortable do I regret getting a breast augmentation to begin with and I kind of go back and forth with this I have days where I do feel lots of regrets and I'm like hard on myself because I'm like you should have just never done it you looked fine and all that stuff but then I'm like no Sabrina you had no idea this was gonna happen this was not something that was in your control there was no way of you knowing that this was gonna happen to you so I go back and forth but I'm trying to tell myself every day like this is not your fault even though it was something that you wanted cosmetically and it's an enhancement and sure you weren't born with it and all this stuff it, at the end of the day it's not your fault and it's something not something that you wanted to happen or that you expected out of something like this so part of me <laughs> does feel like that but part of me is like no like it is what it is and now I feel like I it's crazy because I feel like now I'm embracing my little boobs more than I did before I got a breast augmentation because I'm just like grateful I'm just grateful for what I have everything else doesn't even matter are you the only one in your immediate family who has had a breast augmentation no there's actually a few people in my family who have had uh breast augmentations is the recovery time faster slower or about the same post op i would say the recovery time has been about the same i would say that it feels like this time around it's going to be a little bit faster because i feel really really good and also just the timing seems like i'm able to return back to doing normal things like a week or two sooner than getting like an original uh, breast augmentation or just like a breast augmentation by itself things i wish i knew i wish i would have just gone to dr kim from the jump i genuinely feel and i'm trying not to think about this too much because it, it again takes me back to like the regret part but part of me feels like if i would have just gone to dr kim to begin with my experience would have been way way different a much different outcome which is very frustrating but at the same time it happened for a reason i i don't know why yet but it that's just the way things work for me but i do wish i would have known of him sooner and just gone to him from jump this is an interesting question did this experience affect your relationships like friendships romantic family relationships and no it didn't i actually had throughout this entire experience have had a very supportive circle uh regardless of the decision that i would make like everybody was always like you know it's up to you would make me feel confident and comfortable in whatever decision i decided to make and even now everyone's just like now you're back to like you know old sabrina and like back to how you normally looked and like you look fine this is something that i wanted to add too and i touched on this in my first few videos is that I did not get my breast augmentation based off of you know being an influencer for me getting my breast augmentation was something that I wanted for years it was something that I had saved for for a while as well literally two things that my family knew about me since I was younger Sabrina wants boobs and Sabrina wants kids like I was very open about that I was like I want kids at a young age and I want to get my boobs done like point blank period everybody that knows me knew that ever since a while ago so it was never anything like oh i'm an influencer now so i have to keep up with the look or i have to get a breast augmentation to try to be this certain type of way or like social media no uh -uh. that was not the case with me however there's nothing wrong with that but for me it was something that i i wanted 
forever. Pre social media, pre relationships, pre any of that. I already was like, as soon as I get the money, <laughs> as soon as I'm old enough, I wanted to wait until I was at least 25 so I can see how it would develop and all that stuff. And I wanted to save money and do things a certain way. And then here I am, <laughs> four, four operations later and getting them taken out. But um, that was a question too, like if I got my breasts because of a particular reason or if somebody said something to me or if it was social media and now I feel like regretful and I want to take them out. It was nothing like that for me. It was just something that was a personal decision from years ago, pre-social media, that I just wanted to do. Ended up doing it and it didn't work for me. Any body confidence changes? I don't think so. If you've watched my channel for some time, I feel like I've always been pretty comfortable in my body. I actually went back and was looking at some of my old photos and some of my old videos and pre breast augmentation and I was like I was rocking my little boobs even then like I was still confident I was still buying v-cut summer dresses and v-cut shirts and doing all of that like I no, I think my confidence now as opposed to then is very similar I felt very confident before I got my breast augmentation I liked my little boobs I would flaunt my little boobs and still wear my low-cut dresses and shirts and things like that when I got my breast augmentation, I was still wearing my little v-neck shirts here and there and I liked having larger breasts um, as well. And then now I feel really happy and you should see the pile of clothes that I have sitting in front of me on the floor of things that I've purchased now that I'm excited to wear now that I have smaller boobs and that I'm embracing my smaller boobs and kind of going back to the more petite and like petite, still feminine and still sexy look so it's just been it's funny to kind of see the different transitions because i feel like then pre-breast augmentation i was petite and i was a little bit younger um you know a few years not a lot but i was a little bit younger and i you know that look and then i went for like getting a breast augmentation and going a little bit bigger and having a little bit more fullness and wearing like going through that phase and then now i'm going through the phase of still being feminine and still being sexy just with smaller boobs and relearning my body and just finding new ways to make myself look the way I want to look so I, I don't think my confidence throughout this has ever been like super down I think more so it was probably when I had the bigger ones a little bit lower because of the fact that I couldn't really wear certain tops that I wanted to because I would be in pain which is crazy how that works because it's like you would think that me getting my boobs done would like super boost my confidence 100% no issues but it kind of fluctuated here and there even though i was mostly confident there were days where i was just kind of like i don't feel like dressing feminine or cute or putting outfits together or nothing because i just want to be in a t-shirt because that's going to be the most comfortable <laughs> so um yeah that's how i feel with that last question and i think everything else is pretty um similar if they had caught the stitches right away would you have kept your breast implants i'm not mad at it because i'm glad that this is going to give me time to heal and recover and i'm fine with my nat like natural little boobs and i'll just you know take this time to embrace it and i don't like i said don't even care about what my boobs look like at this point i'm just happy to feel healthier as each day goes by and like i said down the line who knows what i'll end up deciding if they would have found them before who knows i probably if if they would have found them after my original surgery after um when i got that first revision i probably would have kept them but after that second third time i was like no so i don't i don't I don't regret um, not having them put back in there. I feel like I'm totally fine right now. So it is the day before my surgery. I am about to pack up my stuff because I'll be staying over at my parents' house the first few days because the recovery process is going to be pretty similar. So I won't be able to drive the first few days or work out for the first like few weeks. And basically, I'll have to take it slow. So... I'm packing up some things to stay over at my parents' house since it'll be a lot easier in the case that I need anything, like they'll be able to kind of like help me out. But um, I wanted to vlog a little bit right now just to kind of talk about 
my emotional state <laughs> the day before. It's tough because Obviously this is something, like I'm trying not to think of it super, like in a superficial way, but at the end of the day, this is something that I really, really wanted for years. And then here I am about to go in for the fourth time, this time to get them out. I never thought my experience would go this way, which is kind of like, you go into something like this obviously hoping that it's a smooth process, but unfortunately that wasn't the case for me. And right now I'm sitting here thinking to myself, like, is this the right choice? Am I doing it too soon? Should I wait a little bit longer? But then like today I was sitting here and it's uncomfortable. It's so uncomfortable and it hurts and I feel like I don't have control of what's going on with my body. Like I, I don't even know what it is. So I'm like, I don't, I don't know what to do to help it. I just feel in my heart, in my soul, that this is the right choice to me, just to go in and get them removed. It's just been a frustrating process. I just feel like I haven't really fully been able to be comfortable. So I'm hoping that, you know, getting them removed will give me a little bit of relief. Yeah, I've just been really up and down emotionally just because I'm like, how are they going to look after? How am I going to feel after? Am I going to feel back to normal? I hope I feel like my normal self. I hope I feel completely better. At this point, I'm like, I don't even care about having boobs, like breast implants. I don't care about that. I just want to feel back to normal. And I'm just praying that taking them out is the right choice to feel back to normal. I don't have, you know, any symptoms of breast implant illness or anything like that. It's just this weird nerve pain. And they described it as like a trapped nerve. But when I like touch that area, I'm like, is that what it is? Cause sometimes I feel like, I don't know what a trapped nerve feels like from the outside. I don't even freaking feel from the outside, but I'm just like, it kind of feels sore to the touch. And I can feel like the, I think stitching or something. I don't know, but my surgeon said that he's gonna go in and see what he can what breast tissue he can remove from around that area to try to help ease any discomfort or you know see if there's anything there i feel confident in my decision i feel confident with dr kim my surgeon i feel confident with what the recovery process is going to be like i just i'm very very hopeful i feel like this year is going to be the year of like resetting big time all just in so many different aspects of my life this is a big one but just like getting back in tune with my body and my health and just feeling 100% like myself and just being light and free carefree and just normal Out of surgery, I made it. Thank God. I it was just scary. Like going under again, I was like, oh my. So you guys can hear birds in the background because my parents have little birds. But 
yeah i am now back at my parents house and it's now been about five hours that i've been post-op first of all i feel so much lighter before i was a double d and now i'm almost pretty sure i'm, a, I'm an a cup because before i was barely able to fill an a cup bra i'm pretty sure i'm an a cup now but i feel my chest feels so light i feel so light i still can't really move a whole lot because i have this bandage over let me show you how kind of how it looks hold on so i have this on i don't have a sports bra on and you can kind of see my little tiny boob that i'm gonna have but this is just to help keep it super super flat so that none of the like liquid i believe he was saying so that liquid doesn't form or anything like that and so i have to keep this on for i think a week and tomorrow he's gonna call check on me to see how i woke up how i'm feeling so far i have not taken any pain medication at all not tylenol not i didn't even pick up well i think i told you guys i didn't even pick up the norco that they prescribed and so if i feel pain for whatever reason i'm gonna take tylenol i'm probably gonna take tylenol tonight just to be safe and then tomorrow i'm pretty sure i'm gonna wake up just fine i do feel a little bit of like stretching where the the stitches are but that's literally the same thing that i felt with my other surgeries too it's just like a little stretching feeling and once the medication starts to wear off you kind of start to feel a little bit more like oh i can't move and whatnot but the pain is not unbearable not to the point where i feel like i have to take anything so that's good i feel um i feel good i feel a little tired i feel pretty like normal like myself the way i felt before getting them taken out because of the fact that i personally didn't experience any breast implant illness symptoms so i feel pretty much the same aside from the fact that i feel really really light emotionally i'm doing pretty good too i thought for whatever reason like after i opened up my eyes and woke up that i was gonna cry but i didn't I felt fine, the nurse was very sweet. But aside from that, I feel good. My dad took me to, or he went to go pick up some soup for me, a green juice, some crackers, and then my mom is on the way home right now and she is gonna bring some jello, another soup, and that's it, because that's pretty much all I can have today. And then tomorrow, I can go back to regular diet, but I kind of want to ease into it because on the car ride over here, I did feel a little bit nauseous. That's the only thing I felt, just a little bit of nausea. Tired, my eyes, you can see, I'm like, I feel super tired because last night I didn't get much sleep because I was really, really nervous, very nervous. Good morning. So it is now, sorry, the birds, <laughs> it is now Thursday, February 3rd. So it is two days post-op my cheeks are really flushed right now but i could just about cry right now i just got off the phone with dr kim which is my most recent surgeon and he just told me that he went in and removed deep stitches that were underneath where my breasts were and i am just like oh my goodness first of all i am so 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 extremely grateful that i i literally want to cry that i went to dr kim and that i went with my instinct because i was like i know i am not going crazy and this is what i was just telling him i'm like i was like I know i'm not crazy i feel something there when i touch i feel something and it hurts it hurts it hurts it hurts and it, it just felt like it was to a point where i i was like no one believes what i'm feeling and i they did scans they did everything but obviously when you go to urgent care when anything like that you have breast implants and they see stitches they're gonna be like oh well that's normal but it wasn't normal because it was the stitches were somewhere they were not supposed to be. He was like, 
they were deep in there and he's like when i went in to do your surgery i couldn't even there was no way of me even seeing them because they were that deep and low now all of this is so freaking worth it i don't even care how my breasts look after i take this bandage off he was like when i saw the stitches and when i removed them i was so tempted to put your implants back in for you and just leave them because i know how much you loved your results but i was like no i don't want to put him back in there because i don't want her i don't want to get in trouble for not doing what i said i would do he's like but once i removed them i knew for sure that that's what was causing the pain that made me so happy that literally made my day because if you've ever been through something like this to where it's health health wise and you just feel something's wrong with your body and no one can pinpoint what it is no one can figure it out you have no control over it. it's honestly one of the ugliest feelings the ugliest feelings ever and i was at the point where i was being super hard on myself because of the fact that i even got breast implants to begin with and now i'm just like no it, it was not you it was not your body it was not your fault so wow i feel so much more relieved this morning i did wake up with my back hurting so bad because i have to lay on my back and i'm not a back sleeper i usually sleep on my sides i'll be able to finally sleep on my stomach now uh which would be which would be super nice but um for now i do have to sleep like a little bit more flat aside from that i feel good i'm hungry back hurts but I just got the best news ever, so none of that even matters. Huh? Oh, it so small. I didn't think about this. I was just gonna literally do the bottom. I'll probably, well, I still probably won't like stand in front of the shower, like under the shower, I'll probably just use the thing in the front. I just don't want because it's going to go through back here. Which back here doesn't really matter because your incisions are in the front. Wow. <laughs> it looks so skinny. Do you want to wash your hair? No. Okay. Okay, I just got out of my appointment. I completely forgot my vlog camera at home but i just got out of my one week post-op well it's like six days but i just got in my car right now and i am <laughs> i am so 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 happy he took the bandage off completely so i'm now wearing just like a regular sports bra i bought two sizes i bought a size extra small and i bought a small because i was like I wasn't giving myself the benefit of the benefit of the doubt. I completely thought I was going to be a tiny, 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 like an extra small. But the small ended up fitting perfectly. So I'm a size small now, not a medium when it comes to like sports bras. But as soon as he took the bandage off, I felt so good and i can get a feel now for how my body actually looks i got to see my boobs today for the first time and they look completely completely normal way 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 normal they actually look a little bit better than how they looked pre breast augmentation and it's only week one he did say after about two or three more weeks that they should fluff up even more and tighten and get back to normal normal so i am actually really 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 happy with how my boobs look i am not kidding you guys i was expecting them to be really deflated and they look completely literally how they looked before um i got them done if not a little bit better which is super strange and unexpected and i'm actually really looking forward to seeing how they look after a few more weeks if they already look the way that they do i do feel a lot lighter i feel like i look a lot slimmer like before i had i went from an a cup to pretty much like double d's i was a full d small double d when i got had my my implants and now i'm back to being a tiny little a cup so I feel super like slim. Oops. 
like when I look at myself I'm like I look so skinny but it's because I had obviously I was heavier at the top so it made me look a lot fuller Ooh, sorry a lot fuller than I really am so um I'm really I'm happy the other day I went back home and um I went into my medicine cabinet and I took out all of the medication that they had gave me at my like primary care for what they thought that I had um, from the pain that I was experiencing. So I took out all the medication and I got rid of it all. And it was such, that was super emotional because I was looking at it and I was like, I really would have taken all of this for nothing because the pain that I was experiencing wasn't from anything that, you know, my doctors at my primary care thought that it was for and that's not their fault obviously they there's no way of knowing but I'm that makes me even more <sighs> relieved that I went with my gut and just went for taking my implants out because if not there's no way that you know we would have known that I had unnecessary stitches where they weren't even supposed to be so sheesh all right, so hopefully that wasn't too long. Um, hopefully that was insightful and informational and educational and just all of that stuff. That is my experience. That is why I got an explant. And yeah, where I am right now. So now clothing hauls should be back in full effect. And I'm really excited to discover, you know, what kind of clothing and bras and things I find to kind of get the appearance that I want when it comes to wearing certain things and whatnot. But aside from that, I'm really, really happy. I feel very relieved and excited to see how my body heals within the next few days and the next few weeks. I'm feeling really, really good. So far, so good. And I have no complaints i'm super excited and i just feel extremely grateful that he was able to find the stitches get them out and i can slowly get back to feeling like my normal self again so thank you guys so much for tuning in if i miss anything um you can leave it down below in the comment section and i will try my best to get back to you guys asap and um again if you want to check out my other videos they are on my channel i think i have about two or three videos on there about my experience so thank you guys for tuning in i love you guys and we'll finally be back to regular content after this week i know i was a little bit mia the past few uh days and whatnot but we'll finally be back onto it but i love you guys and i'll see you all in my next video